proudest day and the proudest time and the, the seat of a rally here because that day and that hour and those minutes I got the butt between my teeth you know I really stood up and was counted and said this is not getting away I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me what are we doing I said we're going for gold bar that's all we said I can still pick to that run that was just the best best run ever Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast, Season 3, Episode 19. Connor, we're going to talk Rally once again. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the Circuit Iron, which was on last weekend. Then the exciting new uh, ERC news, two juniors going out there to compete. And then we're going to look forward to Monaco as well too. So, busy, busy week ahead. <laughs> Absolutely, plenty on, alright, plenty on. Yeah, and like, the safari was last weekend as well, but like, just with people travelling one thing or another, we haven't got a chance to catch up with anybody there, but hopefully it all been well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a wee bit more about safari next week. It was a very old school Easter night with both the safari and the circuit taking That's place. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a real throwback to our childhood, wasn't it? You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> And then the circuit, the, you know, yes, it's not the circuit from our younger days, but eight, <laughs> eight tough stages. Ah, very tough indeed. And surprisingly tough. I wasn't expecting the kind of attrition rates that we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, but a cracking entry, Kevin. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, you know, the real who's who of, like, of, of the Tarmac Championship over the last few years too, which is great to see, you know. And, and a new winner, Matt Edwards and Dave Monaghan, you know, their first one together. So... Uh, you know, uh, definitely great to see pushed all the way with this man again, Keith Cronin. Like Keith, put in a, you know, once again another top uh, class performance. And Callum was, you know, nipping at their heels until I think it was stage three he slid off. It's just not catching a break at the minute, but just you know, great to see another one. Great to see another winner. And like if you think, what, there was 14 seconds between Matt and Keith. Like it was, you know, close all the way. Um, tricky conditions, um, a tough, tough, as we said, you know, tricky stages. Uh, but another winner is, is fantastic for the championship. You know, we've look, we want to see Keith do well, you know, because it's, it's great to have him back in the Irish Tarmac Championship. But we don't want him to run away with it. No, that's for sure. You know, like uh, you, you know, that keeps this the whole championship alive. That has really just brought a wee bit of life back into it again too. So yeah, great to see. That's for sure. You know, and like you know, it was four stages done twice, but like they were, you, you know, real, you know, challenging stages. There was a lot in them for the driver and for the co-driver. There was, there was plenty of work there and nicely done, you know, with the break in between, you know, run two, then you know, the mm-hmm. regroup of the service or whatever in that. Um, I thought that worked very well. Yeah, that's for sure, because, you know, we've seen in the previous weekend and the, the round of the, the BRC running a five loop, you know, once things start to get a wee bit behind, it's hard to catch the time with the, the wee regroups that give them the opportunity of that, and did, that did happen, they were able to pull the time back. So, yeah, I think that that, that worked well last weekend. It did, and the event pretty much ran to time. Like, uh, you know, they didn't seem to have any issues at all, or if they did, you know, they weren't that evident. No, no, as I say, any time it did start to run a wee bit behind, they, they weren't long upon the forward, which was great to see, you know. And, you know, once again, you know, Josh Moffat, you know, still coming on with the sitter and getting closer and closer to the pace. Desi Henry, very unfortunate, slid off in the last stage. Um, Jason Black won the two wheels, very great to see. Catherine McCourt making the return, and Gary Jennings, like, and they had strong finishes, uh, fifth and six, or fourth and fifth, I think, was the finish up. You know, so strong finishes for them. Interestingly, like, you know, a lot of the, the, the two-wheel drive guys in the top 10 as well, you wouldn't have predicted that at the start of the day. No, certainly not. Definitely wouldn't. And, you know, you mentioned Gary and Cahan. They're both in, in the Fiesta Rally 2s and what? There was four Rally 2 Fiestas in the top five. Like, yeah. you know, some turnaround in a year. Oh, that's, you know, like, you know <laughs> this time last year, like, you know, a festival was the, the boogeyman. Now, all of a sudden, it's the car to have. It's, it's just uh, it's amazing just how quickly things can turn. Absolutely. And speaking of things turning, the weather played its part and certainly tyre choice was tricky. Yeah, like, you know, th- there's no doubt about that there. And I think no better man to tell us about that is Matt Edwards and Dave Mullen and the wonders of the rally. I'm joined now by the wonders of the 2024 Circuit Ireland, Matt Edwards and Dave Mullen. Matt, it's a few days afterwards, but still, I would say it sounds good. 
Yeah, it sounds good. It, it feels good. Um, I think it will do for a long time. And, you know, I've, I've said on my, my little roundup post earlier that um, it's probably one of the sweetest because of the time gap between the last one and this one. And obviously all the water under the bridge with COVID things at home and, you know, get back into a car from that side of it. And then obviously the from the, the rallying side, not done too many events since. Um, and obviously the slight slightly poor start to the year in Galway and you start to wonder is it is it ever going to come back to you know where we're aiming to be um, but um, yeah with, with obviously everybody we've got on board and Dave in the passenger seat it's I think we always knew it was there but there's so many things that have got to go right to unlock an event like like yes like well like Saturdays um, to make it actually happen it's you do wonder if it's going to come back and like Dave, from your point of view, like the circuit and like if you ask the man in the street that maybe doesn't know an awful lot about rally, it'll be the one rally they know. And like, you know, it's maybe not the event it was all those years ago, but it still proves a very difficult challenge. And to have your name now on that list of Road of Honour, pretty special. Oh, for sure, it's very special. Um, you know, like you're exactly what you say. You know, there's people from home, and we say that you win the David Wynn Circuit of Ireland, you because know, it's, it's the event they recognise, whereas. And I'm not not um, knocking the event for one second. You know, we can only contest the event that's put in front of us. You know, and it is a circuit round that we get to contest. Um, you know, we can't go and do a five day or a three day that they had when they had it. Um, but be fair, you know, I think everyone who compete in the event, Keith, Josh, everyone say it was a extremely challenging event. Um, but it definitely was. It's definitely it's this the one is known by everybody. Everyone knows the circuit Ireland knows. You know what the event was. It's the one that, like you said, that everyone everyone at home knows the circuit of Ireland by name. Um, but you know, for, for me, I think the most award needs to go out in, like Matt said, you know, the, the pace was there from the offset to race Callum, to race Keith, you know, to be competitive amongst them and that, that's, that was the most rewarding thing and then obviously to get to the end of it and, and, and get that win was a, a, a massive, um, a massive monkey off the back, I think, for both of us. Yeah, like this has been like a project, you know, like this has been building up the confidence, this has been building up the speed. This hasn't just been just throw you two years into the car for one event and expect you to go well. This is a longer term project and like to see it all come together like within the third rally really this year is you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I'd say so. It was planned as a one rally at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's kinda of grew legs since twenty twenty two, don't you go? <laughs> No, yeah, this, I think year, this year there's a programme, so we'll see. Yeah, and Mark, I think as well from, go on, I think just to say from CNN point of view, um, you know, the programme and the, like the longevity of it and, you know, it's we're already sort of thinking, you know, the foundations that we can put together this year for maybe doing more in, you know, in the future together. Um, you know, the people that are coming on board are, are all sort of thinking the same way, which is, which is amazing. Um, and I think those sort of conversations, they don't take the pressure off in one way, but they do in another that, you know, there may be a bit of a bit of foundations going for, for something a bit more into the future. And that, I think that helps you settle down as a driver that you've not got to go out and do something crazy in one event to, to justify it. And, you know, everybody wants to do well all the time and everybody involved in the team is, is looking the same way towards, you know, success and, you know, building a, building a campaign that, obviously gather some momentum this year, but also, you know, hopefully we can put something together to, to keep going as well. Yeah, because like, you have to give uh, Martin McKenna his dues. Like, he's a very enthusiastic sponsor. Like, he yeah. was there, Dave, David is uh, he's one of his sales team, and I can't even think of the other young guy who was there. You know, the whole team was there as well. It's like, you know, this is a, like, a, a huge team effort in their part. Like. Yeah, and I think I think they just love being part of it. They're all sort of rally nuts, obviously. They sell rally cars, so they've got a big interest in you know, for them all to be there and, you know, David said since, you know, to, to see it unfold in front of him. He had his father there as well that would follow would have followed the Circuit of Ireland on the five-day event and he, he just said to be part of it and to see it firsthand was, you know, very special to them as well. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. You, you've got Marty back behind the seat, the, the back behind the wheel again too. He competed there <laughs> the weekend as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But here, I think, to be fair, I think anybody, anyone that has the the grow or the interest or the to put investment behind 
a rally program. They have to be a rally, you know, a rally, rally not rally. They have to be, they have to have a true interest because you know, we've said that you know that the the events and championships have, have still work to do to make it more saleable to to the companies who aren't who aren't aren't how do you say directly involved in the sport. Um, but you know, Marty is one of the people who who just has a, a a true love for rallying and he's full of enthusiasm and hey when the when the when we discussed the how do you say not even a plan but a, a proposition to him at Christmas time or before Christmas and he went away to develop you know, instantly he had he had his own thoughts and his own twists and and how it could work for him and how it could work better for us and, and you know he he is full of enthusiasm and you know, you have to admire that you know. He, the man eats, sleeps, and drinks at the same time. You know, he's he's a family person, he's a business person, but he's a massive. Yeah. And, you know, you see, you know, all that come to fruition, you know, and the the way that Saturday worked out as well, Matt. You know, you talked the last time we spoke about the confidence and one thing or another. It was important for you to go out there and put the marker down early on Saturday, and on the very first stage you were fast. Is that, that set the tone for the rest of the day? It did, but you'd be surprised to know how much I was speaking to that stage saying this isn't working, this doesn't feel right. And I was I was convinced we something wasn't quite right because it we you know we felt like we had no traction and I had no confidence whatsoever to push to the notes. The notes were working great, everything that side was fine, but I just didn't feel I had a car under me that was capable at that time. <coughs> and then um you know it took my head a bit a bit to get round it. We swapped back to the we started on a cross wet and and the RW uh R7 plus and the wet we crossed to start with and then swapped them back after the first one which was the right choice for the rest of that loop um, but I, I had no I had no idea that we'd be fastest I thought if we've dropped 10 only we've done alright and we'll have to sort of reassess and go from there but you know he's, I muttered some words to him when he said we were fastest I just didn't believe it but <laughs> in some ways I thought well that's that's unbelievable but then it kind of unlocked the thought in my head that if that's enough to be fastest, and I know we can find more, then we we could be on for a good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, you know, Dave, does that come through? Even you know, when you're sitting the passenger seat, do you feel that uncomfortableness coming through from from Mark? You know? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I did, and I knew the grip level was very low, um, but I knew he wasn't comfortable because he spoke. Right. And usually, if when you start a stage, at the end of a stage, and even beyond, you don't hear from Matt. But the fact that he was saying that the, there was no grip or no feeling or it didn't feel right, you, you knew he was uncomfortable. But at the same time, you know, it felt like he was making the most of what he had or what, what we could do with it. So I, I didn't I didn't feel as bad in the car as he did. You know, yes, the car was moving a lot and the car was sliding a lot. It was poor traction. But, but I, I put more down so the, down to the grip level was so poor. Um, but then, you know, when the time came through, like, like, like Matt said, you know, we've, we came to the end of the first stage in Galway. We could see the gap that was there to Keith. You know, we caught Johnny in the first stage. Um, he was carrying a puncture, and then we had our own half overshoot. So we could see the the time gap in Galway in the first stage. And we had the mishap in the second one. But in West Cork, we we were still pulling our hair out into into the middle of Saturday as to where the pace was. Um, so then to go out of the first stage in, in on Saturday with with that kind of time, it, it just gives you that boost to the way that you like, like Matt says, you know. That, if that felt bad, then there, there's more to come here. So you know, we are kid, we are we are on the base to start off. With. Yeah, and the, because of that short, sharp nature of the event, only eight stages covered in one day, there was no room to you know bed yourself in or find your feet. You had to be on it right from the get go. Yeah, that's that's right, and you know, I, I I wouldn't say I did anything extra other than I went for a run on the on the morning of the rally, and you know. Um, I ended up staying over the night in in Dungannon, which wasn't originally part of the plan. But just, if you're going for to stay in Dungannon and you're having a lie in in the morning, you're going for a run to wake up because you've got no time to. And I thought, well, that's fair enough. And I did, and I did it, and yeah, you know, it, it could be just a placebo thing that made me feel more awake and ready to go. But you know, off the start line of the first stage, I probably had a clearer head than had I not done that because the morning of the rally often for me is a big headache with stuff going through your mind and so maybe that half an hour of clear head just trying to get my breath all the time rather than thinking about the rally was it was a good move but um no it was it was nice and it was although it was uncomfortable in some ways 
I was quite comfortable with what I was still trying to achieve because the, the goal then was to not throw any time away with a, a mistake because I was uncomfortable or or not feeling the traction. So, you know, we, we had a sensible, you know, reined it back in a little bit where as soon as I realised it wasn't quite working for me and then, um, you know, followed it up with some good times the rest of the morning. Mm -hmm. And like, does that mean now that everybody's going to go out and do a, a run now before the first stage for every rally now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even sure I'd be doing it again. I ended. Up, I actually ended up with cramp. At, well, I, did, I mean, I didn't even tell Davis, but I ended up with. I had cramp in my my arms and my legs after the probably the first or second one of the afternoon. I thought I hadn't put my electrolytes in my bottle for me for my drink, and I thought ah, that's because I went for the run in the morning. I probably, you know, dehydrated myself a little bit. Well, not necessarily dehydrated, but because I was drinking loads of water, just. The, the salts I was lacking, and uh, but yeah, that was a bit of a lesson again. So, and the, and the fact that he didn't get half the water he usually gets in the car, Kevin, because we had the screen wash bottle to clear the mud out of the windscreen. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> and a bit of extra tire changing going on, which is a bit more sweat than we used to. <laughs> yeah, because that was like Saturday. Like normally you bolt on the set of tires and you, you go out and do your lip, but you were like hedging your bets. You were taking a kind of a mix of tires, you know. And that led just having to change between the stages as well. I think the, I think the event led to two spares, you know, in our eyes. The fact it was four stages, it was it was four stages covering quite a broad area, but on top of that, they were very narrow. You know, there was going to be, we knew there'd be a lot of cutting going on, so you're more susceptible to get a puncture or pick up a puncture. And you, you could get a puncture in the last half a kilometre and not drop time in the stage. But then all of a sudden, if you only have one spare, you're compromised for the next three stages that thought in your head, I can't get a puncture, rally's over. Um, and going back to Donegal 22, no, last year Donegal 23, we ran two spares and it didn't seem to compromise the car, the balance. So it was a it was a natural thing to run two spares from the offset. Um, so that, that was kind of what was in our plan from once you saw the stages on, on Friday morning. That was kind of it. our plan was to run two spares. Um, and then obviously there's no point in carrying your know, four slicks and carry two more in a boot. It was always a case of you'll know, carry the option to cover the eventuality. Mm -hmm. and and as it turned out, obviously, it was an Yeah, and Matt, you know, the, that, you know, the, some people say, oh, you know, the extra weight, and, you know, the, you know, it upsets the balance of the car. No, you, didn't really, you don't feel that. You're quite comfortable with that wee bit extra weight and you feel it's a bit pays off in the long run. Yeah, I mean... I was actually explaining to the kids because they'd read or they'd heard me talking about the tyres and I sat near them. I, I just said it in, in basic terms. I'd rather have the comfort of the traction than, the, than any discomfort that a weight imbalance might give me, you know, by carrying the two spares as an option. Um, and in that situation, I mean, the, the disadvantage from two spares is far out, what, you know, the, the benefit of carrying the two spares is a lot better when you need them than the disadvantage of having to take the weight. Um, and I've got a few little things that I do as well that sort of mitigate the, the balance issue. Um, and, you know, I think it's just... The, I, I suppose my driving style allows me a fair bit of time to think as well. So I've, I've got a bit of headspace to con sort of remember which side I've got on the front for the tight corners. <laughs> And then which one's on the back, which side for the fast corners? Because that's that's kind of how I have to play it in my head. Because the, the slow corners, you're obviously loading the front up quite a lot. The fast corners, the back starts to take effect. And it's when the back gets loaded up that you're probably more susceptible, particularly in the wet, to, to being caught out on having the, the two odd ones on the back. But um, yeah, it's, um, it, is, it isn't a normal sensation, but if you can get your head around it, you know the benefits I think are there, and you know we've we've used it to our advantage twice now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the fact, you know, Dave Dave said on the start line of of stage six, he said, you know, let's make it count. And for me, that was that stage is one that I probably wouldn't normally change my st uh, sort of my thought process for. But if you're gonna change. To get an advantage, you've got to change your mindset and go hard to push that advantage home. There was no point changing the tyres and driving the same level of caution. You've got to go and take what you can at that time. And 
that was quite different for me to go into a stage actually trying to take an advantage. I'm normally going in to mitigate the loss, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or make sure I don't give anything away. So to go into a stage and actually go to do some damage was was different, but it, no, it worked. Uh, and as <clears throat> am I right in thinking that you, uh, like Keith went out with four slicks and f two more slicks in the boot? Where you just one, one, slick one, the, one slick one, in the boot, I think. One, yeah. yeah. So you just went out with four slicks and two wets then, that you said you said two wets on the car then, uh, yeah. then so that, and that you had to, as you say, then make that count then, the rain come yeah. and you just had to put on your yeah. two wets and yeah. try and, where, where's the, the where, where can I take advantage of that stuff? Yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. And that stage was very wet for a big percentage of it. The next one was probably drier, drier than the first one of the two well stage seven was drier than stage six but there was definitely places in that that were still bad and I thought to be honest Keith did a really good job of getting the time he did in that stage because I wouldn't have wanted to be on four slicks in there that's for sure <laughs> <clears throat> yeah I think Dave that is, isn't that the, the, the you know the, the intrigue of the sport too that the two tyres can make such a huge difference like you just went in and was it 10 out of them and that was on stage 6 and yep. the, the, having to be able to hit the reset button and go out and into this next stage probably not on the ID tyres but no he didn't lose as much time the next time round I suppose he probably had to adjust his style that wee bit too with what he had on board yeah for sure but but Keith kind of Keith said because it's it's quite um, I would just say it's, it's yes as a rivalry and we're trying to beat Keith or Keith's trying to beat us but at the same time we're still we still are very open with each other because we're both representing the same brand with Pirelli so um, and you'll don't be wrong Keith's Keith ran Pirelli's before but not as not as with the same the same level of intensity I suppose as Matt has or he doesn't know the product as well as we would know it if you understand me to know the benefits of it or the, the range of it so that was from, from the, from the get-go this season it was always a case of you know, there was no there was no holding back on information. You know what, what, what we knew, Keith knew, and vice versa. And we had a conversation at the briefing that morning about running two spares, and he was fully aware what we were going to go on was four cut slicks with two wets in the boot. Um, and then obviously when the situation, you know, we we met the rain in Ben Burr, and the the plan was made to change the wets before the start of stage six. Um, Keith didn't have the option, so I think it was. Yes, there was a physical advantage, but I think there's also a mental advantage of game because you know when you roll up to the stage start and you have two wets on and he has four slicks on, you know, it's it's not plain sailing because you, like Matt said, you know, you have to have a I don't know where where you get the headspace to try and calculate if a slick in the right front or the left rear, um, to know where you can and can't push. But you know but I think, I think there's a mental game there too, you know, there's, there's an instant thing that's saying he has two wets and I don't. So you're at a loss to the way. Um, but I'd love to know how Matt could switch off after the stage to forget where the wets are on the car. Because I knew you'd bring this up. <laughs> he just the wrong ones off. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> right, so we, well, came, we, came, we came off stage on. seven. And the plan, it was stage seven. The second half of the stage was fairly dry, to be fair. Mm -hmm. So that, And we knew that stage eight was predominantly dry, if not completely dry, because it seemed like the shower had come from the west and was moving across. And obviously, it was still good up temperature. So the plan was made that after stage seven, put the slicks back on. So we came off stage seven, and we arrived to the stop car. And we said, we put them on at the control. And I said, no, we'll do it before, because we chance to get heat them then. And then we came off the stage and Keith was in the interview with Killian and he took two little along at no speed, as you would, because we couldn't even get past to get the tyres changed. <laughs> so we stopped to change them and we had a, a pretty good routine going, unpracticed routine, but it seemed to be working quite well on the previous changes. And um, so I took the the right right front to put it in the boot. Then Matt had the, the wheel tightened. I went to the right front with the wheel brace to tighten that wheel, came to the left front, picked up the wheel that Matt had given me and went and put it in the boot. Had it strapped in and realised, fuck, it's a slick. <laughs> <laughs> so back out again, back around, Matt, wrong wheel. It'd be okay, it'd be okay. But I knew in my own head that he, he's a very... Um, 
How do you say? If 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 the, if the wet stayed on the car, it would have played in his head in the last stage. Yes. Not up again. Took the slick. Took the wet. Took the, the wet back off the front. No, but just put the off the left rear. We swapped yeah. the left. Yeah, we, we swapped the left rear then instead of the left front, which the wet was still on. Put it back on again and left there with three or four minutes to get to the control. So <laughs> I just like I, I like I must remind him next time we come off a of stage, go stay in stage mode. That's the way they are on the car. The advantage play that Donegal last year, you know, we took we took two slicks with us on the Saturday. Yeah, Saturday middle loop. We took two slicks with us. So we did we did the first one out with with the slicks, with the wets on the car, and then we put the two slicks on as a cross, going to knock, start knock out. Uh -huh. And um, but Matt had a, had a, a call out too that the wet had to stay at his left front because the stage is predominantly wet to start. He had to have the wet for going down the other side of the the hill thing we call it. <laughs> but the the advantage stayed out on, on that stage and the following stage um, on that rally, and then the next loop round we went with. Four six, did we? Seven plus and a seven we C, six, wasn't it? We? Yeah, yeah. We, went, we went with. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a whole cross in there along the way, and then it came to Sunday, and we got the the talk of being wet on Sunday, and we thought, but Atlantic Drive is bone dry, and Fannin's bone dry, but Glen is supposed to be wet. So if we went with two pluses and two sevens and two fives, we'd have yeah, we a stop and even a hard <laughs> adjust across. <laughs> But um, you're going to need to turn hey, the tires. You're going to start. Obviously, they've never tried it, but we, we've tried most options now when it comes to crossing things. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here, this yeah, yeah, you have to. You know, the the boys are all at such a such a level now. You know, Callum, Keith, Josh, you know, everyone in the top eight or ten cars on Saturday could set a faster stage time. Um, and that's the way it is in all those rallies. You know, William Crichton and Cork, or all, all you know, everybody go to is the same now. So. Where you can play a strategic strategic advantage, you know, that's where you're going to get a jump because you're not going to get a jump out of straightforward driving at Rangiri State because they're all at such a good level. Yeah, because if you if you just do the same as what everybody else is doing, you're not going to get you know you're not going to find that five or six seconds. You know, you might find no. a tenth. Yeah. Even when more. you see the first stage on Saturday and how dirty and, and greasy it was, and you saw there was only 0.4 of a second between Matt and Keith, and it was. Unlike Callum to be seven seconds behind, but then go to the next stage and you had three cars all within two or two and a half seconds. Yo, know, that yeah. just shows you know, the testament to the drivers, the cars, the setups. They, they're all at that same level. So where you where you can take advantage and there's a, a strategic advantage, be it with tires or otherwise, then that's we need to do it. And the other the other miraculous thing is, on that second stage, it was probably the longest and the dirtiest, and nobody had ever done it before. Yeah. And, and it was still there was, it there was still two cross. seconds between us yeah. on with all all those variables thrown mm -hmm. in and it was it was crazy really. Yeah, because they what you used to do is it two uh, two pass reggae and then the next time you're doing it is go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and and there's, there's, there's no advantage to be found, no. you know, really there. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And then, Dave, I think it was you that said, you know, the next round then is heading into the, the Lions Den, Killarney. And, the, you know, <laughs> Keith Crone's going to go fast there. <laughs> Keith Crone will go fast there, and Callum Devine uh, uh -huh. has won the rally. You know, be fair, Callum was, was ridiculously fast there in 19, you know, against ra racing Craig and, and Alistair. And, you know, his first time in an R5 car in those stages, he was very, very fast. Um, obviously, we lost 20, 20, 21 with COVID. 22, you know, again, he's, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt in the pace that Callum has in Killarney. You know, he's a two-time winner in the event, 22 and 23. Um, he has Noel by his side, who's who's rich with experience in the event. Um, and then, obviously, you're going to keep back door. But, you know, I think Saturday, we're going back down to... The same stage as last year, so the boys have knowledge of it. And, and although Keith didn't compete last year, you would be a stranger because Heather our groom, no matter which direction which they run him, it, he, it's still close to home for him. So the Lions Den is a good way to put it, I think. Yeah, that's for sure. But like, Matt, you really that challenge. Like, that, that doesn't really phase you. You'll go and do, you know, you'll put your system in place and you'll do what you yeah. always do and put faith in that. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it seems to work. So it, it's worked in other places before. So, you know, it's obviously a system that does translate to wherever you go. And, you know, that's been the case on Mole, on Belgium and, you know, in Italy when I've done the historic events. And, you know, it, it just seems to work. So I just got to just got to repeat that, repeat that sort of preparation. And, you know, I've, I've got some some on board from when I've been there with Pirelli, you know, just put a camera in and, you know, use that footage. But it's, um, it's a, it is a big challenge and that's, that's why I do it. But, you know, it's, it's, it keeps you focused. It gives you, you know, something to, to aim towards. And I'm, you know, I feel I'm a better person, you know, generally when I'm, when I'm focused on something and, you know, that, you know, my, my lifestyle is, is better. And, you know, I'm more myself when I am focused and driven on something. So, you know, that's, a lot of that is what I've missed since 21. And, you know, that's what caused a few, you know, problems in, in my mental health and things when I wasn't doing a proper championship. It, you know, it caused havoc. It's not, a, it's not an addiction in that sense, but it's, you know, when you haven't got a, a main focus that you've, you have had for 20 years, when that disappears, it's, it's hard to, to work out what to do next. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's for sure. And the, you know, we talked at the start of the year. You know, this was you know get this. This was the plan. Get this year. You know, you're now three events and like no regrets about signing up for the Tarmac Championship. This has give you you know all those tools you know to help you deal with everything. You know, your mental health, your your your, your addiction, you know, almost to so yeah. This is feeding the habit. <laughs> it it is, but it, it is it's good for the business side of things as well. You know, it's you know I spend a lot of time in Ireland. Um, even Dave's kids call their spare room my room now, so that, that gives you gives you that gives you that impression of how much of time I spend over there. But it's um, yeah, it, it's great. And, you know, I enjoy the I enjoy the the competition, you know, the competitors, the fans, and you know, the events are well organised, and you know, it's the, the classic stages. And Kalani is one rally I've always wanted to do as well. So that's you know one of the classics to to tick off. And um, you know, then we've got third time lucky at Donegal after that. So. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, we're all, we're working the right direction. That's for sure. Yeah, and Dave, finally, do you you know, like this was like for you it was a big thing as well too. You had to step away, you know, from the the family business to you know to compete in these. Like you're always at the, the events, you know, fitting tires or advising guys and one thing or another. You're still trying to do as much as you can, but it, it's less time now on the, the truck. You know, do you find it like, rewarding for you to be back now in the co-driver's seat as well? And do you miss the, the truck times as well? I don't miss the truck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still drove it home. I still drove it home. I still drove it home. I still drove home from the, uh, the circle on Saturday evening. And, no, I'm on this weekend. But no, it's... Um, hey, I, I've always... I've always, how you say, promoted ears as selling from experience. And... I, I, I still believe that is a, a strong attribute to the business. You know, we, we don't just sell a product from the catalog. We, 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 we know it, we understand it, we, view it, we know the value of it, or how, how it works best. Um, I, I, here, I'm, I'm blessed with the, the family I have. You know, that my father, Philip, still, you know, he's still so heavily involved. Even my sister has, has stepped up to you to a much greater level than, than how to say, I wanted to in, in that respect with rallies. Um, to give me the, the ability to go and do the event. Um, you're done in all 22, Matt will tell you, we, we spoke about it, the circuit we spoke about in Donegal. And then we did Donegal. And then you didn't speak Donegal. about it, you told me we were doing it. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Donegal 22 was you brought to the table. <laughs> Donegal 23, I told you we were doing it. <laughs> um, so... You know, then Donegal, we, did, we did the Midlands 23 and put that, that the event, events of Donegal to bed and then we did, went back to Donegal last year and then here, uh, I, I know Matt Edwards, oh, I, don't know, I know him a lot better now than I did a couple of years ago, but I know the calibre of person he is, the calibre of driver he is and there's very few people that you can get the opportunity to compete alongside who you know is capable of winning rallies um, and does it at a level that's as close as you can to professional level. Um, you know, I, I, I've done WRC events, I've done European Championship events, and I sat with drivers at that at that level or that caliber, um, and appreciated their, their how do you say their ability and their their dedication to it. Matt's one of those people, and, and it's it's an honour and a privilege to be alongside him. Yes, we have the banter, and I call him 
a three time British champion who used to be fast. Now he's fast again. <laughs> Um, and here it's it, 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 it is a privilege, you know. It, it is a privilege to, to compete in those cars at that level. You know, it's 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 eye watering what what they make them do. Um, and when I think it complements the business, the fact that you can understand what they're what they're doing with them. You know, I I've a and other we what we talk about. You know, I have a big beam of bonnet that come, like, organizers of rallies. In many instances, don't understand what it's like to be inside a rally car. Where. Mm-hmm. If you don't understand what what the competitors are facing, how can you try and and structure it or regulate it or or control it? And that's that kind of reflects in, in my work as well. You know, you, you can't sell a helmet if you don't understand the attributes it should have, or you can't advise a tire if you don't know its ability or its lack of ability. And that's something that you know, I got from my father when he competed before me, and yes, I competed a lot. You know, from when I started up until. 2018, and then I kind of stepped back and took on a pretty job because I, I wanted to go that direction. And then obviously the, I got to grow again. After doing all 22, I knew that this person, I could be competitive alongside him and there was a chance of winning rallies. And you know, my kids, Daisy's eight, Philip is six, and daddy's warped in rallying, but he doesn't compete. Or you know, why? You know, who wins rallies? Your Uncle Gary has won rallies or Daisy have won rallies. You know, whereas now after Saturday, they've seen... Daddy has won has won a rally, whereas you know it's not my first win, but it's a it's my first win in a long time, if that makes sense. Sir. Oh, and their and their memory, yeah, early two thousand nine. So to, to me, last it, stage, it, it, that it, last stage was horrible. Does <laughs> 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 like, my, like obviously that was the last question, but it always, you know, is that still like does there still be nerve going into that last stage? That's what we're probably getting at. Go on, you go first. <laughs> is there nerves? How can there not be nerves, Kevin? People say that Matt Edwards is a three-time British champion, and you know, I laughed. Fast. I saw an interview that Killian did, and Wes Cork and Gary Kiernan said that there's Keith Crowe, and he's driving over the top, a three-time British champion. But welcome to the real world. Keith Crowe is a four-time British champion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he's not, we, we all know the talent of a person he is, and to go into the last stage having seven seconds advantage over him in the stages that the, that were put in front of you at rally seven seconds was absolutely nothing you could leave it behind you with without even a thought so yeah. you know, if you were 15 20 ahead you would still so simply leave it behind you yeah well I, I like you know you said at the on the start line it's just another stage and you know I, i'm a big one for you know not dwelling on it not obviously not talking about it, just go and do the business as normal. And But, you know, I knew as soon as we got into the Nadgeri stuff, probably a, not even a mile in, that, you know, I could feel I was on edge. You know, I was pressing the pedals a little bit differently. I felt I was turning, the, I was doing, I was a bit busy behind the wheel. And I thought, right, deep breath, reset, calm down, and just drive it like you have done all day. And... You know, after I had a couple of big deep breaths and sort of settled down, it was it was okay. But I felt, you know, for the first first mile and a half, two miles, I was I was overthinking, and then you start not necessarily overdriving, but you start doing too much in the car, and that's when you end up with, you know, just putting a, a wheel slightly wrong or you know doing something that costs you a couple of seconds. But like, you know, I was fully not expecting as such, but I knew Keith was fully capable of taking all that time and more back if he really wanted to. You know, he, he, he obviously had a, a different approach sat on the start line, but there was every chance that that could have been a full Keith Cronin attack that we were going to be on the end of. So, you know, we just went, as, my, my plan was just go as fast and as hard as we could because a, a seven or eight second lead going into there was absolutely nothing. And I, I suppose before we do go, like, they have said all them nice things about you, you know, like, obviously you have to have complete trust in him sitting there beside you, telling you where to go and what to do and when to do it. Like, there has to be that mutual respect, this two-way street. Yeah, uh, oh, there's, there's absolutely n- no question of that. And, you know, my notes, I would say, are fairly simple, but there's quite a lot in them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's, he's got a good understanding for what they what they mean, and he, he's 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 generated that very quickly. You know, there's there's never been a compatibility issue, and 
I know for a fact I wouldn't want to sit next to me. Um, <laughs> so, you know, how, how he does it with such you know, sort of consistency and calmness and, you know, it, I'm always. I always cross the finish line and wait for the tap on the leg and say, "Well done, lad." And I know then that if that's felt all right for him, it should be okay. And he's normally a pretty good judge of that. And you know, coming through a couple of those stages on Saturday, I got the tap on the leg and I thought, "Well, that that feels that felt good to me." It obviously, felt good to him. And that sort of judgment of the pace, I think, is is crucial to any any partnership. And um, you know. It's as much the work behind the scenes as, as it is in the car. You know, I, I'm fairly shy by nature, and you know, Dave's possibly less so. But um, <laughs> you know, I, it's um, just to pull the whole thing together takes different characters. Um, you know, and you know, I'm very appreciative for all the help we get, and I know Dave is as well. But it's it is hard work, and you know, challenging to to get everybody together and get everybody on board. But you know, without Dave's support, and you know, just you know, I get the odd the odd snotty message, go and pull your finger out and go and speak to him or whatever it is. And, but, it, you know, you need, you need that as well. And um, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good partnership. You know, they're both families behind us as well. It wouldn't work without that. Um, you know, that's very important to both of us. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just when we can go from strength to strength. And dare I say, even if we don't win another one, we've proved that we could come from, you know, a, 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 you know, a difficult place. Uh, and come and achieve something, you know, that means a lot to both of us. And, you know, I'll, rem I'll remember that forever. So, you know, that's, I think that's something we'll both take away. So thanks to Matt and Dave there, you know, they, they had a very busy schedule. Matt back at work on the Sunday morning, Dave working as well there from I caught up with them. Um, you know, thanks for such a, an honest and frank conversation. You know, you have to say those guys have a lot of trust in each other and it's so evident the way they speak. And now we'll, we'll speak now to the, the modified winners, it's Jason Black and Carl Egan, and then that will roll into the winner of the historic, Thomas Davis. So I'm now joined by the winner of the two wheel drive, uh, Jason Black and Carl Egan. Jason, you have to be delighted with their own Saturday. Yeah, for sure. Um, we didn't know what to expect. I guess it's been that long since they've been out. Um, kind of just bed ourselves in and um, I suppose come out of the first stage with a decent time and say maybe we'll not be that far away today. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all round good day. Yeah, the like, car. You know, like it's been six, seven months now since Jason was behind the wheel and down, you know, down the stage. Like, did you see any rust on him the first stage, or did you see it was clicking straight away? No, it was pretty much straight away. Really, um, there isn't much rust in that. I don't ever get out. <laughs> oh, it would, look, it was safe. Like, but no, um, first two or three k, and then we're we're back to normal. And a bit of. But a bit of a wake up call on the first crossroads, so we did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wide awake from there on. <laughs> Full concentration from there on. <laughs> <laughs> but the, car, the, the level that you're at now, there isn't time to you know, take it easy in the first stage and kind of see where you're at. And then you have to go hard from, from the go if you want to be competitive. Yeah, for sure. Like the 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 pace in the modified is it's, it's it's unreal at the minute. Like there's that many guys there now. Like everyone just maybe 20, 20 modified drivers there, fifteen anyway at least. Like can go out and win any weekend. So yeah, you have to work go. There's none this bedding in. Like even a three day rally has become a sprint now. So if you're not there, you're you're left behind. Like that's for sure. And and, and just like, it's not even just like you know the, you know you can go to. Monaghan and you'll you know you'll race four or five guys there, you go to Donegal, go, there'll be different four or five guys. This is all over the country and these guys are travelling and they're quite everywhere. There's not just like a, it used to be there were big specialists in certain events. Everywhere now there's that 12, 15 guys going and you have to be able to bring your A game to every rally. Yeah, for sure. Um it's good to see, like it just brings everyone's pace on. So it is um, um long made last, like because I suppose there was a while there that's there was only a few guys that were fighting at the top, and that was great at the minute. Mm -hmm. And like, does that push you on? Like, you know, whenever you're involved in them kind of battles, do, do you, you know, feel yourself pulling the, the belts on that wee bit tighter and just, you know, leaving the break that wee bit later if you can? I will suppose so, yeah. Was, um, we didn't put our, our necks out too much now on Saturday, so we have played it safe. And when you won on this weekend, and I wanted to, we kind of planned to do the two, two rallies close to home, like, so. Um, one to have a car to do the second rally. <laughs> <laughs> that was the great thing about you know this weekend and next weekend. 
like half an hour from home really aren't they both yeah exactly half an hour one way half an hour their way it's hard to beat like sleeping in your, your own bed the night before the rally like it's mm-hmm. it's class so it is it's definitely helps the, the cost of cost side of thing as well like so it is mm-hmm. so. that's for sure and like karen like the one of the probably the, the top mark two men anyway at the minute was is mark alcorn and like whenever you're going there and you're taking a few seconds out of mark alcorn you know you're going fast yeah, sure. Look, he's he's a psycho for a reason. Like he's and he's a talented guy too. So, but he's quick everywhere. But you have to be on your A game to race them guys. It brings it up another level. Like for a while there it was Gary and Kevin. Now Mark is in the in the mix. You have Daniel. You have you have all these guys that are just fighting. And Connor Murphy coming there. Yeah. Brian Kelly's getting is there as well. But like it's getting that even the recies are getting become pretty serious. Like getting the detail right and. Yeah, but it's, it's enjoyable too. Like it's it's all part of it. Like. Yeah, and like you know, do you feel that you're helping? It's helping you develop as a co-driver as well. You know, because you know the attention to detail has to be like the notes have to be perfect. You know, your DVD prep has to be perfect. Yeah, for sure. Like it was a bit rusty there. Now just to get back into the bringing that pace again. For basically, since the Ulster, I, I've been out a few times since, but there's been nothing to that level really, to be honest. And um, it just took a few kilometers to get back into swing things, but yeah, look, it's it's part of being the co driver. Like you, you just have to raise the bar every weekend and try and improve. Really, watch yeah. back, back and in, study what what little details like we spoke there. Myself, just about one or two of the things we're going to do with notes for next for this weekend. But if there are only slight details that something goes wrong, but look, you have to put the work in too. Like yeah, because it, it, um, it's those wee small things and those fine margins that makes the difference. Yeah, that's it. Like it's it's ten to seconds. Like I think there's one stage there we finished. There's only point three or four of a second between ourselves and Mark. Um, another second, and the first stage there were three off David Moffat. Small margins. Like look, we only won end up winning the multiple by three three seconds in the end. Like, but it's not a lot. Like no, and Jason, like, three seconds. Like it takes you longer to say it than what it is. <laughs> And like that is the, the crazy thing about it. Like that's that's not even run wide in the corner. That's not even a half spin. That's just like even maybe even missing a gear or something like that. Three seconds yeah. would be gone. No, well, that's it. You can't afford to have a, a spin nowadays. Like it's just that side of pace, and there's always someone going to be looking to take your place if you're if you're not up for it. Mm-hmm. And the, the the conditions on Saturday, the, the, the there probably wasn't an ideal tire for for the four stages. You know, you may have. A good tire for two of the stages, and then you did you know the other two you were completely wrong. Did you you know carry two spares and do any crossover, or did you just put faith in what you had on the car at the time? Yeah, well, I suppose that was what that's with a bit of a jump on the boys on on stage three because we did carry two spares and we had and um, put two mediums on the back um, mm-hmm. for stage three, and I suppose that helped a wee bit. So it did. Um, but yeah, you have to be. What do you call it? watch the weather and like we all got caught out in that shower in stage five and I don't think anyone was in the right tire like it was it was just a changeable day and as you said the muck and everything like it there was no tire that really suited you could probably a, a wet tire would have been the best in the front but because you have a four stage loop and no service um you couldn't afford to go out on it because it just wouldn't have lasted mm-hmm. yeah and like yeah Carol like. I, I don't know, but like from going out, you know, and walking out the stages or driving out the stages, there there seems to be an awful lot more cutting going on now this year. Like the the, the pace at the top has, you know, the the margins even is getting finer and finer again now. And like the cuts and you know the, the amount of pollution now, for for want of a better word, of putting it, <laughs> that's been pulled out on, and like that must be very difficult when you're doing the reggae, trying to look and see what what could be there. Yeah, well, I think that's where we we do quite a, a fairly detailed recce in that we can preempt a lot of the stuff to how extremely it gets cut up. It's a different story. Um, case now, it's it's we've seen it last year at the start with Formo and the Ulster, some of the cuts. Yeah. He Matt have just brought it to another level, and once one person goes in, we're we're all in on it. Like so, um, it's just it's just trying to preempt what's what's going to be there. Um, is the biggest is the biggest thing, but like if if you take your time in your recce and you're you're watching lines or see who put a wheel in there, someone put a wheel in there that on the first pass we'll we'll try it the second time and just take a note of it and you know just you got to be clever and play smart game like. Yeah, 
Yeah, because uh, like that, you know, it's known where you can take that risk and where you can, you know, you, you, you nearly need to be doing that in the right way because there's no point in taking the cut, you know, during the rally and there could be a rock or something in there that you haven't already discovered kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Like, the, we've had one or two surprises over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, no, we learned like that from the doing the BRC, the forestries, wrecking in the forestries and stuff. Like you can get caught out so easy with rocks and stuff, and um, you just have to do a good wrecking and keep watching where everything is. Mm-hmm. And like you know, like the circuit, it was only one day; it was eight stages. But like that was a real tough challenge. You know, like people think that oh, it's only a one-day rally. That's a handy rally. It was far from handy. No, that was a that was a tough day as well, and as tough as you'll get, like it so changeable and like such a mixture of stages, like the amount of driving and bits, and then your fast and flowing bits. Like, a, mm-hmm. no, it was a it was a top event. Like, mm-hmm. probably the the muck had cut out, as you can see in some of the videos online. Like, it was bad, very bad in places. Like, but you just had to get through it and play it safe in them bits and make your time elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the, this weekend coming, the, you know, you haven't even time to, to celebrate and enjoy the one because they get straight back into the, the prep again. Like, the, does the car require much work over, you know, the, over the week between the two events? Or? No, not too bad. No, Jerry Buckley's in the garage at the moment. He's flat to the map trying to get her back together and all, <laughs> all checked over for this weekend. So, yeah, so no, it should be grand. It's only more of maintenance more than anything. So, it uh-huh. is. So, no problems. So. And then the, the, the yourself, you know, the, the two of you sort of try and work on the, you know, the, the notes and get a bit prep done before the event. Like it's not just Saturday morning, here we go, kind of thing. <laughs> Depends. Very <laughs> 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 busy work is. <laughs> uh, go on ahead, Carl. I said we'll both get a look at the DVD, and I've been studying there to see it, but there's not really much, too much change, and you can do the notes too early because. It's 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 not the same as seeing it live for yourself. Like you, you might think you can go in here and then you arrive on the day and there's a big rock or a big gully that's waiting to catch you out. But if you you can get a fair idea of some, like, I can do minor changes, but we kind of leave it all to the the recce where we both have an opinion on it. Then we might see things differently. Um, yeah. What providers are like, say, what Killian's providing, like we might see something slightly different, like, but um. No, it's, 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 they're quite quite good, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. We do as much as we can. Different sides of the country are ideal, like. But... Mm-hmm. And like, this weekend, now, is going to be epic for the Modified, you know. Like, Monaghan has become the Grand Prix for the, you know, the, the Modified guys. Like, and everybody that's anybody is going to be there. And, like, it's, you know, you talked about 10 or 15 guys. Like, in Monaghan, there's probably 20, 25 guys that's going there thinking, at the very least, I'm going to come away here with a podium. Like that's going to be something else come Sunday morning. What oh, is? Yeah, I know it's going to be class. So it is. Um, be, be good to see the stage times now and then the stage one to see who's who's mixing it. So well. <laughs> a lot, a lot of the boys were there on on Saturday too, and they've all they've all got a bit of seat time now, and they'll be they'll be raring to go. So mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in a, in a strange kind of a way. There's a lot of guys using the circuit Aaron as a warm up for Monaghan this weekend. Mm-hmm, for sure, likes of Damien Torres and Desi Keenan and uh-huh. them guys that maybe weren't setting the times of thing, but they'll be bedded in and ready to go next weekend. So, mm-hmm. yeah. for sure. And Tar, you know, is that you know, are you like mad for Tar come now Sunday morning? Oh yeah, I definitely. Look, I I I go every weekend if it was possible. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be ready. Like if you're not, you're left behind. Um. Like we, I kind of were, I suppose, I was a small bit surprised how quickly we were on the pace the weekend. So it's probably a good um, idea, really, for next weekend um, going forward. Like, but I wouldn't have liked to gone to Monaghan without getting a, an event done before. <laughs> the, so. Yeah, I could because you know, like if you'd been getting cold to Monaghan, like coming off that first stage, you could have easily lost that ten or twelve seconds. That you're never going to make up through it today. Oh yeah, look, it is, and there's a lot of local guys in Monaghan too, and I'm sure they'll know where they're going. Um, but see, when you get the helmet on, it's a, it's a different league. Like everything, it's like Donegal; it just comes up a level there for for Monaghan. Yeah. One day Donegal, you say. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And look, Jason, yeah, from, from the helmet goes on and you, you pull them belts in. You know, you might have a bit of crack about the bumper before the, sta- to the start of the stage, but every second's a prisoner then. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's when, it's, when it all counts then. You do your good recce and make the most of it whenever the helmet's on, as you say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, you know, we spoke about other, you know, other crews with this, like how you can go from being flat out, you know, like what do them to take a second off them, to come to the end of the stage and then, you know, to help them change a wheel or, you know, like even with your brother there, the, the other guys, you know, was up on the side and they were trying to get the gearbox sort of for them to get them, you know, to the end of the rally. Like, it's amazing, such rivalry and then such friendship, you know, how these go so easily hand in hand. Yeah, well, that's it. Only for the boys at the end of the, the very last stage. And you know, we got the puncture on Saturday. Sure. Um, they lifted the car up and we got the wheel chains because we couldn't get the jack under. So we're sitting too far over. Like, and it, you say it takes that to camaraderie to like make makes the rally in, like, so it does. Yeah. I think mean, that must be a, a great buzz that, you know, yes, you're going down the road at 10 tons, but you're, you're there with your buddies and, you know, they know what they've put on the line to do what they've done. And, to, you know, they appreciate what you have to want through there as well. Yeah, look at the end of the day, especially us, by the way, and it's, it's the fastest man from A to B that really counts. Anthony, in between then, we just do what we can to help one another out, really. Um, just the spirit of the game. There's a massive camaraderie there. Like, I know we were on the receiving end of a good bit of help last year with Gary. Even James Ford was stuck in down in West Cork. Frank Kelly, like, it's nice to be able to ha- help them guys too when they're, when they're in need. Like, what, from once... Start line to the finish line, that's we're, we're the arch enemies, but out of that, then we're, we're the best of friends, too. Like, so yeah, I guess it always what struck me was I think it was Aaron Johnson said, you know, like somebody said to him about, oh, you know, you're very friendly with you know, like uh, Lappy's uh, co driver and all that. There, and he says, like, we're not racing them, we're racing the clock. And I always thought that was a, a, a great way of looking at it, you know, that yes, all those guys you wanted to beat them, but it was the clock you were racing, really. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, maybe you can get a bit wound up and get caught up in the moment. Like, well, look, it's, it's the clock. That's it. Like, and you're doing your I'm just in to help the next guy or change a wheel or change a set of plugs or whatever it needs to be, like straighten a compression stroke, whatever. We'll all get on board or yeah. we'll on the receiving end. And... And, then, and then just after doing saying something like that, you know, that you're yeah, left in someone's car, you know, and there's all the boys scrambling down below and like, how do you, you know, <laughs> get the mindset back that, you're like, we're going down this stage again? Is it just when like, you get in and start doing your routine, putting, you know, getting the helmet on, you know, start doing up the belts, that the mindset changes again? Yeah, I suppose so. You just have to forget about that and concentrate on the, your face notes and where you're heading. And, um, yeah, no, no, it's good. Like, it's good buzz, like, whenever you get going. So it's a, um, you make the most of it when you're on the stage, just too. <laughs> I haven't think of too much else. <laughs> I think that you know you can't, you haven't the the, the time or anything else to to think about anything else. You have to be fully tuned in on them notes and everything that the car is thrown at you. You have to be taking all that and because the, these two point fives and even the two liter cars now are monsters. Yeah, well, that's what um, Carl was saying at the weekend. Like it was hard to get on the pace of the of the pace notes, like because. One minute you're going through a mucky bit at 20 mile an hour and you can't get grip and then you hit a bit of dry tar and you're just doing 120 mile an hour in a blink <laughs> it's just it's madness like so it is but you know, it's, just, it's something else like when you get a bit of dry road like and make them go yeah Karen, uh, like it's madness if you thought about it you probably wouldn't do it but i would say you wouldn't swap the seat for all of the all the tea in china ah uh, no not minute anyway um <laughs> Will I will get behind the driver's seat for for a goal like, but it's it's a different buzz. Like I think you need a bit of a screw loose to be in the pantry. <laughs> Look, I will, you know, um, yeah, it's 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 hard to step away. Like to be honest, mm-hmm. even you get some guys. You could be out every weekend. There's always guys on the blower looking for you. Like so, um, well, no, it's. I'm happy where I am. I'll stick where I am. <laughs> Thomas, um, the championship has been going really well for you. You're four rounds down and two two ones a second and then, you know, Killarney at the end of last year as well. It's been a good season so far. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Can't complain. Um, yeah, just, just yeah, felt like I've sort of the pace has just got built a little bit as it's as it's gone along. Um, so Kalani was the first first round of the championship. Um, wasn't the quickest there. Um, managed to, yeah to go a bit a little bit quicker in in Galway and and then hopefully yeah just think I've gone a little bit quicker sort of each event that's that's come along you know um, probably just helped by you know them being quite close to each other and not having the big gaps between events which sometimes I've had so that was that's definitely helped. Yeah, because everybody you know I talk to they talk about seat time is key. You know, you can you can do all the prep and all that, but the actual getting your bum in the seat and the steering wheel you're on, there's nothing yeah. to that. Yeah, I think I think I noticed it more probably in um on the last event. Um like the first stage didn't feel particularly quick, but the the time was quite good. Um so I think that's what happens, you sort of go quicker without realising you're going a bit quicker. Um, with with a bit more seat time, so yeah, that's quite good. Yeah, and the, you, you know, like that's West Cork. You had every condition under the sun throughout you over three days, like night stages, and then like torrential rain and flooding, and then Sunday turned out quite nice. So like it must feel good too that you you, you had all those conditions and still come out on top as well. Uh yeah well yeah we didn't do the we didn't do the Friday oh, you didn't do the Friday yeah of course yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah it was still still super tricky and um some of those stages on Saturday were probably the worst worst I've ever done to be honest with all that water um and the fog so mm-hmm. it was nice nice to get through them um and then on the Sunday morning conditions felt a little bit more like your normal typical West Cork um which which was good yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you, are you finding this year too? I, I'm talking to a lot of other people, and they're saying, you know, the cuts this year, what the top guys are making, is making it even more difficult for just guys coming through then, because the road you rate than the road you come across, <laughs> it can be completely different at times. Yeah, especially in um, on that last event. Now, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you've probably seen some of the videos, some of the cuts that the you know the top guys are taking. It was yeah, completely. It was like a different different route, you know, that you were that you were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, bit more like sort of similar to what you'd when we just seen when we went to Belgium with people taking the big big cuts mm-hmm. um, and dirty in the dirty in the roads ahead. So um, yeah, luckily um, I had Shane sitting with me on the last event, and yeah, he was giving me you know he'd done the event a few times before and was saying what what he thought the road was going to look like after a couple of passes. So so that definitely helped then when you came to it, you know, because you were expecting it a little bit more. Yeah, then it wasn't just such a surprise then either then that you were pre- almost prepared for it. Yeah, yeah. So the notes were sort of marked and anticipating mm-hmm. anticipating the mud and yeah, they were pretty much what we were expecting. Mm-hmm. And then on, on Saturday past the circuit and you know, I think you know, we we can all recall the circuits of years ago, but like this this was a different challenge, one day, eight stages and like tough, tough stages. Yeah, they were super tough. I mean, sometimes the benefit of like a longer event is you can sort of bed yourself into it a little bit more. But this one, it was, you know, you just thought you had to kind of go from it at the start and and then assess it after that. You couldn't wait to see what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you just first first stage, just sort of thought you had to go for it. And, uh, and then obviously um, Ray broke down. Um, and McQuaid, I think he didn't get out the first or second stage. Mm-hmm. And does that even make it almost more difficult that you you have to find a pace that you're comfortable with, but you don't want to be pushing too hard, rather than maybe driving, you know, ten tenths, maybe you, you you pull it back maybe to nine tenths. Yeah, I yeah, I think um, so. I struggled with it in Cork Twenty. Um, Neil was obviously the quickest guy on the first stage and then he went out on the second one. So it felt like I was driving to sort of keep that position. Um, but then I did, I did find it quite hard and I'd have like big swings in my times. So you would sort of lose maybe 20 seconds um, just because you're taking it too steady on like a particular stage. Um, but then in, uh, in the circuit, it felt like it was, it was a bit easier to, to manage um, whether the stages just didn't have like the high high speed stuff where you can sort of lose a lot of time by being a little bit too careful um, that possibly did help a little bit um, 
and yeah maybe yeah probably just the speeds weren't quite as high so it was a bit easier mm -hmm. I, mean, I know i spoke to a lot of guys and some people think historic rally and you know why uh, you know that's you know you go there and you take it handy it's not this is like these guys are fighting over every second as much as the guys at the front of the field like, it is so competitive yeah i mean in um west cork you know there was sort of single single figure digits at the, at the end um so yeah it was it was uh that was definitely pretty tricky. That was, um, you know, you just, it was like a long two days then you didn't have any, no respite. Um, yeah. And, like, and, and do you get a great buzz out of being involved in a battle like that? And do, you know, the, the, every time you pull on your helmet and, you know, tighten your belts and it's like that, you know, that, you know, it's, it's such a fine mar margin that you can't, you can't take it easy. You can't bite off. You have to keep it down. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely good to have the, have the competition. It is. Um, I mean, I don't suppose anybody wants to go to events and just having it too easy. I mean, sometimes it would be nice to have it a little bit easier. Um, I mean, West Cork, there was probably, you know, maybe five, six or seven people that could have that could have won that. And, you know, on another day, it, you know, could be another result. Um, it just, yeah, you just, it, it does feel like one little mistake when everybody's out. And you sort of you can go from first to, to fifth sort of thing quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And then you know the next round coming up then is back to Killarney again. You know, and uh, hopefully better weather. We haven't had much luck this year so far. But like that, the, the, the stages down there are probably some among the, some of the best in the country. And the, you know there'll be a massive entry, no doubt, for the historic there again. Like an event you've done in the past, is it something you enjoy doing? Yeah, I definitely enjoy enjoy getting down to Killarney. Um, and it yeah, it just feels like when you go there in the summer months, you know, you just got so much more grip as well. And the roads just it it feels like almost like a bit of a different stage when you go up the gap in, in the summertime to the winter time. Um but unfortunately it doesn't look like I can do it this this year, so which is a bit of a shame. But um so might have to get up to, to Donegal now instead. Ah, excellent, excellent. And like, what what is it is the attraction to bring you over to you know competing the, the Irish Tire Mike Historic Championship? Like you know we've had Declan and Casey on, and Declan you know you know talks about you know the great bond between all the, the drivers and the co-drivers and how much fun there is. Is that what helps to bring you across as well? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely down to the, down to the people. You know the stages. Um, I mean, you know, there's probably events that you wouldn't that I wouldn't do if if some of the boys weren't doing it you know you just you sort of you want to go and you want them you know that group of people that you're racing against you know to, to be there because obviously you you know them and you sort of become friends with them so that's definitely a definitely a lot nicer um but obviously you know the stages stages are amazing as well um and just yeah i think it's like that the package of everything is just what makes what makes you want to keep on going back over Excellent. And then, you know, like all this wouldn't be possible without the, you know, the guys in the background, you know, like there's two people in the car, but there's a huge team of people that makes this all happen for you as well. Yeah, yeah, definite, definite. Um, you know, is yeah, like you said, it's it's like a complete it's a team team effort and um yeah, which which is yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then and then the car you have too, you know, like yeah, I mean Scott Williams Motorsport built the car, um, which was new for Kalani. Um, yeah, just yeah, lucky to have such a nice car. Um, you know, I mean the nice thing about historics in a way is that you can't, you don't come second or third and go right. What can I spend money on to go quicker for the next event? You know, you, you've kind of got what you've got, and you can't keep on chucking money at it to, to try and go quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they've got a got the Sherwood engine which um is, I think that's helped me the last few events as well because it's such a talky engine and in these sort of tricky conditions you can just sort of leave it in a gear higher than you possibly normally would and it just just helps mm -hmm. it does makes makes the driving a bit easier excellent so like you know you would encourage others to come and get involved in the championship as well too because you know yes it's competitive you know but there's a good fun element there to it as well oh yeah yeah, I mean, I had um, had an R5 in the past and uh, a modified Escort. And, you know, I'd be working, say, in the week, and then you'd want to go away on the weekend just to do an event. But, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have the time and probably the knowledge to, to, to spend on setup and all of that sort of stuff. 
mm-hmm. and like boys would be altering suspensions and different things, ride heights from one event to the next. But with the historic car, it was just, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It stays the same from one event to the next. There's, you know, tire pressures and what tires, and that's pretty much all you do, you know, um, which is nicer in one way because I've done stages in the, in this car and I think if I'd have had adjustable suspension on, I'd have spent time wanting to change clicks and stuff. Well, obviously you don't have that luxury now. And I think sometimes, well, especially with me, it was all in my head as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, just, yeah, just leave it. Just, just drive what you've got basically. Uh, jump in and drive and enjoy what you're doing. But yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's just one last thing to think about and mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's good. I enjoy it. Uh, great to hear from Thomas there and he's doing you know a sterling work in that historic championship at the moment and hopefully it won't be too long if he's not back in Killarney we should hopefully see him definitely for Donegal to continue the fight in the historics um, Kevin there was good news today more news out of Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy and uh, like the, <laughs> the news just keeps on coming we're always raving about the work they're doing but Jack Brennan and Aoife Raftery had an announcement today and they joined me to um, chat about their news. Aoife, Jack, thanks for joining us and uh, fantastic to hear your news today. Motorsport Ireland Academy are going to be fielding two cars in the Junior European Rally Championship. Uh, Aoife, for you, it's a return to the championship you competed on last year. Yeah, hi, Connor. How's things? Uh, Delighted to announce that we're going back for another year at the European Rally Championship. Um, We had a good year last year and we learned a lot, so we're hoping to bring it into this year and to keep improving. And you're you're partnered up again with Hannah for this. Yeah, it's good to have Hannah back in the care. Uh, we did a few rallies last year together, so it's nice to go into the first round with someone um, that I've experienced with and at least we can start off on a good foot. And Jack, for yourself, Billy Coleman, award winner. Um, you know, you've had a couple of competitions outside of Ireland, but really this is, is dipping the toe into the big time now. Yeah, it really is. Um yeah, look, it's it's definitely um, not like that I've done before. I've only won uh, one European type rally done in Sardinia back in twenty twenty two. So no, it's it's definitely going to be a, a big change. It's going to be a lot of new challenges. But um, myself and the rest of the team are, are definitely up for it. So um, no, look, it'll be a, I think it'll be a great year. Um, the experiences that we're going to have out there are going to be uh, second to none. And I suppose the childhood dream of mine to be heading heading out to the RC. I suppose after watching the. Uh, Watching my dad compete in the Irish Tama Championship since I was uh, since I was a baby. So uh, no, look, I'm delighted to be going out there and I get this opportunity. And you know, Jack, you're going out with plenty of support behind you. You know, Vifa who c- competed there last year in the RC rounds. You've also you know access to John Armstrong to Josh McIrly, and you know it must give you that bit of security or that bit of comfort that there is plenty of people to give you advice and hints and tips. Yeah, it does definitely. Uh, the Support from the academy and all its members, the likes of John, Josh, William, Eamon, all these boys who've done all these big rallies before. It's it's definitely a help when they're only a phone call away and they'll tell you exactly the, the do's and don'ts of European and world rallying. So it, do, it does make things a bit easier. They give you things to watch out for and stuff like that. So no, they definitely they definitely make it easier. And same for yourself, Ape, you know, yourself and Hannah, you have support network there. Okay, you have a little bit more experience in the ERC, but I suppose it's still fairly new to yourself as well. Yeah, look, it's um, it's good having a year done, but it does make a big difference having the academy and likes of Josh and William and John there behind you as well, just to give you that a bit of help. Um, and like, it's great to see John is also going to Hungary, so to be able to kind of ask him questions as well and use his knowledge will be a good advantage to us all. Um, yeah, no, it's a really good opportunity, and we're really looking forward to it. And if it's it's still going to be a fairly big challenge for you, like there's only one event, the 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 Royal Swedish Rally is the same as last year. Everything else is fairly new to you, is that right? Yeah, all the other rallies are all uh, new events for the juniors, so it's a good challenge, and I think it's kind of nice that we all get to start off on a fresh foot. Uh, Sweden was is the only carryover event from last year, but unfortunately we didn't get so far in that event, so we don't really have the experience of that event. Um, but look, it looked like. A really good rally and it's nice to see it back in the calendar again for this year and jack you know competing in the in the the 208 rally four car it's a fairly new car to you you've only had a couple of runs out so far will you get a chance for a you know a pre-event test uh yeah we should uh we're doing the uh, the organizers pre-event test out there on the wednesday before the rally so 
we will we, we'll definitely get time to try and get used to used to the gravel in Hungary and try and get the set up right and stuff. But uh, no, look, we're uh, we're just gonna take things step by step. We're not going uh, we're not gonna shoot any big massive goals for the first couple of rounds just to try and get through them, finish the rallies, gain the experience, gain the mileage and the seat time and uh, go from there. And Aoife, you know, a bit more comfortable with the two eight. You've had a few good outings last year in it. What's your target? What's your your plan this year for for the junior ERC? Yeah, look, um, we're starting off on gravel, which is probably my preferred surface. So I'm glad that the first event is starting off there. Um, you know, we look at all the with the academy, we look at the, all the splits per kilometer and that gap to the fastest. So we'll be looking at that again and monitoring it and trying to um, keep improving that pace and that splits per kilometer and just um, over the event and over the next few events in the European Championship will be our goal just to keep improving that and see those times improve. And, you know, as we said at the start, you know, it's Motorsport Ireland Academy are behind this huge support from the MIFA. Yeah, look, there's a huge effort being put in there by the Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy and everyone behind it, um, from pace notes to fitness to nutrition. You know, we've got someone there helping us along the way and it really helps then when we get to go to any rally, but especially when you go to the bigger events at the European Championship, it's uh, it's wonderful to have their sport and look to get this opportunity is it's absolutely amazing and it's just a big thanks to everybody with sponsors and the academy everyone on the team uh just making it happen uh, yeah i looked uh the academy is uh it's had me is definitely um has definitely changed a lot of things for me with the way i look at things now as opposed to where i was when i was in jail and housing car but um no look the the work that they do is is just monumental if they help you with every single aspect of rallying that you need from from the fitness to the pace notes to the nutrition every every single aspect is covered and they having their support going out behind you is is second to none you see what they're doing with the likes of josh and eamon and william and like um the support they're giving them so um it's it's great to see they give give us the same support as well and i suppose um without my sponsors and all the great people i have around me as well no this would be possible so uh no i'd have to thank every single one of them so thanks very much here to jack and Aoife. fantastic news and no doubt we'll be keeping a very close eye on the Times now next weekend in Hungary. Uh, now, this weekend coming up, we have Monaghan, uh, the Grand Prix. Um, the quad and entry, Connor, they have pulled together. The, the modified entry in particular, it's going to be fun. Oh, frantic is the only way I can describe it, I think. <laughs> oh, look, there's going to be incredible battles there. It really is. It's a fantastic entry. Mm-hmm. But come here, you know, obviously we're interested in what the modified men do, but, you know, there's one battle yeah. that's going to take place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> between seed number one and seed number two between mm-hmm. josh and sam yeah like you know i think sam has won three and josh has won two you know and like i'm sure you know both of them want to get an extra another one on the board so <laughs> they'll have their own rally no doubt with that there you know but uh, you know there's a couple of other guys there who might you never know who might sneak it out as well too but yeah it's going to be some battle and hopefully <laughs> we're, we're nearly due a dry rally but there's no guarantees of that in Ireland <laughs> <laughs> no certainly uh, not no. weather forecast is, is, is iffy at the minute so who knows but yeah. um, and you know again could make a heck of a difference if it was you know wet halfway through that event that's true you know it was either going to be either wet or dry the mixed conditions seem to really just didn't seem to unsettle everybody you know but yeah, it's going to be a, a titanic battle, you know, and like I'm really looking forward to it now. So I think we'll hear now from Thomas Trainer and Kerry Stevenson. Thomas and Kerry, we're just a few days away now from uh, Monaghan Rally, and what a fantastic and you sort of pulled together there. Yeah, the entry is brilliant now. Um, fair play to um, everybody from in their entries and that there. So you couldn't ask for any better entry, um, so you couldn't. We're, we're delighted with it. and. Uh, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing them all in the morning. That's for sure. And like that, you know, the Triton Shares Championship has really come, uh, you know, really come to empty its own now in the last couple of years. Now, the rotation system, it seems to be really well working because events are getting full entries and reserves right throughout the year as well now. Yes, it's, I think it's working out good there. And it gives the clubs then that bit of a break to get set up for the, in the following year, so it does. So it really helped us, so it did. Um, and that there, and uh, your stage commanders and that there is not putting them under pressure. It gives them a year off and mm-hmm. stuff like that there, you know. So, yeah, I think it's working good at the moment anyway. So Yeah, I just carry it. 
uh, behind every rally, it's a very small team, and it's nice to give you know get the break and get your thoughts together together rather than have to go back to that every year. Every, the two years nearly probably works better for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's a good team of people out there. Thankfully, mm -hmm. um, they all know what they're doing. So I mean, it's it's uh, we're all heading in the right direction. Hopefully, uh, and, and, and it makes your guys' job so much easier if you have a good team behind you that are pulling everybody's pulling the same way. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and uh, it's just incredible the help we have at the moment there. Uh, even today, there are the boys out marking roads and that, and the help. And tomorrow morning, there's a crowd of us meeting up early tomorrow morning to get back out at it again, you know, so it's brilliant that way there. So it is, um, we have a, a big uh, night navigation and um, we run four night navigations in the year and all them boys are coming in to help tomorrow morning and not there. So it's brilliant that there, that way there, you know, so it is. Oh, well, that, you know, a, a strong club makes all the difference. And then, uh, you know, and like, looking forward to, to next Sunday, like what time roughly does that actually kick off? You know, what time does the cruise be leaving the hotel? Well, the, for, uh, the cars will be leaving the hotel shortly after nine. So we will, uh, I think it's 9.30, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and uh, they go to um, a service there. The service this year is in combi lift, mm -hmm. but it's uh, uh, centered to all the stages. So mm -hmm. it is. And it's beside the Four Seasons, which is great too. So it is. Um, yeah, we leave, we leave there. Um, first car will leave there uh, probably around uh, 9.45. Uh, and head for a uh, stage one then Sheetram. Um, Sheetram is a stage that um, it's a different name on it now because of the direction it changes halfway through it. But um, it's much the same as a stage we used in uh, 2016. So it is. Uh, people remember Wilkins Bridge where Rodney Wilkins um, had a, an issue with the bridge. Mm -hmm. So it's running something similar that start, starts a wee bit different. And it runs that way, uh, same way around the bridge and that there. And um, it then it turns right instead of going on straight. And uh, it comes over into the sheet room then. So starts off a uh, fast, it tightens up there in the middle a lot, so it does. And then to the finish, it's fast then, fast and flow. And then again, so it is. So lovely stage now, I think. Um, it's uh, 11K, so it is. Uh, great stage to get started off on. So it is, and um, bit of even in it. So it is, but real good tarmac on it, and um, bright little grass up the middle around like that there. So even today, after all the rain we had, it's, it's brilliant. The sofa's brilliant on it there. So yes. Yeah, so and then they um, move on to stage two. Then stage two was a stage. Uh, it, it's you go out Dharma Road out of Monon and head for Glasla, and you turn off um, for Glasla. The stage would have been used in two thousand and six. So it would, um, but with two kilometres I put on to the start of it, and it finishes different. But uh, I love the stage myself when we rallied at no six, and um, that's why I went with it all. Said it was going to be COC. I'd like to run a version of that stage. Mm -hmm. So it is. So um, it's a more technical stage now. So it is a lot of work on it. Starts off fast and flowing, tightens up, and that there. So it does. Um, It'll be a lot tighter stage than that there, a lot of work on it. Um, so there is and uh, typical one hunt type stage, so it is. So but um it finishes over there just off then to at Carcrin Chapel. So it is. So then we leave there, we turn right and we head down the MEV main road. and we go down as far as um halfway down the MEV road, you're heading front of the clay and we turn off left. And it's a stage called the Factory Cross. It'd be near a bit of it would have been used back long before ever I done any rallying, like you know. So, um, it would be a new stage, so it would, um, very fast flowing stage, very a safe stage, great tarmac under it. So, there is it's a 12k stage, so it is, um, but I think everybody will enjoy it now. So, well, when they before they come into service now, so yeah. but, um. Yes, so the, uh, these are real good technical stages, you know, to bring the best out of drive. And there are new stages as well too, which, you know, it's not going back over the same old ground. This will give the competitors, like, it's, it'll not favour the ones that have done this rally before. This will be a, a level playing field for everybody. That's a level, a, a level playing field for everybody, like, you know, so, um, you know, and, and um, like, uh, you know, the, the two Moffat boys will have no... 
No. You know, they'll be just no the same fire, no <laughs> but or anywhere, you know, they'll not know where they are at all, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So bar the start of, of stage one, like that's the only bit they had ever done before, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it'll be good for everybody. Um like the, the, the R5 is brilliant entry, and then you go down to class 14, it's just it's brilliant. So it. <laughs> They're all it I, because Monaghan has turned into the, you know the, the go to event that all the modified guys want. You know, like Donegal Monaghan is they're on a par now of the, the, the events that they, the, they want that trophy in their collection. Yes, and I don't think this will disappoint this year. I think they'll all really enjoy this. Uh-huh. Um, so so the well, um, I think yeah, it should be brilliant now for for competitors. Yes, for sure. Um, so it is. So mm-hmm. um, and you, you mentioned there. Oh, sorry. Uh, you mentioned there earlier was the, the Moffat brothers. Like the the, the Moffat family have given you the use of combi lift for the surveys area, and yes, what yes. a fantastic facility you have there. Oh, like, that's brilliant, class. brilliant. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Now, so it's brilliant to get it. So it was. Uh, I think it worked brilliant. Now, so it will. Um, plenty of room, plenty, plenty of evident around it. They were more than helpful with us, you know, for for giving it and that there and. Um, like there, there's more people, you know, uh, they they were brilliant. And then we have uh, scrutinies in McIlvany in the Scania garage. Like we're using that as yours. Fair play to them. Um, either of them, it's just mm-hmm. brilliant. So it is to have a, a facility like that near us, you know. So, yes. um, there's a lot of people like that there are in business and are a great help to us. Nail McGuire as well. Mm-hmm. We were going to Nail's yard on on Monday to to make up uh, equipment and that there, you know, and just a phone call to Neil McGuire and he's, you know, I gather up a few men and you bring a few men and we'll all do it, you know, that's it's brilliant to have that on the club, you know, that, mm-hmm. you know, so, yes, uh, credit to the ball, yeah. So sure. And uh, Kerry, like, from your point of view, like, it's great to have, you know, so many good contacts within rallying that you can call on to get, you know, if you need to some, use somebody's yard or, you know, for scrutiny or, or even just getting equipment gathered up there, the likes of Nine of Wire and things like that there. Like, that makes everybody's job so much easier. Like, it, it's only a phone call away. It's not, you're not running around the country looking for someone. Absolutely, yeah. We have a great relationship with all those people uh, for many, many years, and hopefully that will continue. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, uh, it's great comfort to have all those facilities. Yeah, yeah cause it, it just, uh, it, like, and not only facilities, but really top class facilities, you know, Michael Vanley's, you've used it for scrutiny for years. Like it's almost purpose built for the job. You know, the combi lift, like that's, that's going to be a world class facility you have there. Like Maguire's yard, like it's central to where you, what the stage is and everything else as well too. So it's, it's, it just, it makes everything very easy. Yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. It's great to have it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then Thomas, like, what time roughly will the cars be in service? You know, if people want to get along and have a look. Eleven forty-five. This first car should be heading into service after okay. stage three. So it is, but it's a short road section. The stages are very, very close. There's very, very little road sections mm-hmm. on the on the stages. Even come back into service, it's only short yes. run back in and that there. So it is. Um, so um, yeah, it'd be, yeah, I think the combi lift will work brilliant and. As I say, thanks a million to them for for mm-hmm. offering it to us and give and, and there's no hassle with it at all, you know that sort of thing. So, we're yeah, delighted to have it. I, you know, it was always brilliant that you had the the service in the town centre, and that was brilliant. But because service has become such a big animal now, uh, the, the, that area was almost getting too small, and now it's good to be able to take it and you know have it still close to the town, but you know, and at, like at such a good facility now as well. Yes, yes, it's brilliant. Yeah, uh, 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 very, very good, and I think it would work oh, brilliant. Um, and uh, what do you call it? Um, we'll have all the services and Evan in it, you know, for for tires and Evan. It'll be yeah. plenty good for all that, you know. So it will. So, mm-hmm. but um, and then again, four seasons then too. You know, they've been on board there as last from two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So they are, and they're brilliant. Uh, you know, for meetings even and and at all, we we won't have held in it. It's brilliant uh, thing. So, and then on 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 sponsors again. Then we have for for Silver Stream Stage One with uh, Cardiff Developments Ltd as a sponsor, and Stage Two uh, Silver Stream with Flack Flack Pugil, uh, Garage in Monon Town Pugil Garage in Monon Town, and Stage Three then the Factory Cross with Barry McKenna Agri and New Holland Tractor Sales. You know, then by the ball come on board and yes. you know it's just a phone call to ring them and no bother. Uh-huh. 
Yes. Yeah, bring them. As, 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 you, as soon as you make the phone calls, yep, what can we do here, kind of thing? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yep. yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very good now. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to the event now and he, hopefully it all runs smooth and mm -hmm. that there. Um, so so we are. Um, but for marshalling that there, um, we'd like to put a, a word out there for anybody that wants to help on the day it's or leading just, up to it. Mm -hmm. we, we, uh, our chief marshal is Connor Maguire. Most people know Connor. And that there, and it'd be all right to read out his mobile number there. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's 086 446 and that's Connor McGuire, uh -huh. or even myself. Uh, my number is a uh, 087 418710. So it is. So any help at all on the day will be more appreciated. So it will. Um, but. Um, yeah, um, we have a, we have a lot of marshals not gathered up from other other uh, clubs. from other clubs and that there, but yeah. any help on the day will be mm -hmm. um, we we'll really appreciate it. So yeah, and then you know for spectators like those, the thing is very important is listen to what you've been told. Like the marshals and the officials is there for your benefit. You know they have they've got the experience. They know what they're talking about. If they think somewhere's not safe, it's because they know it's not safe. They're not just and you're going to look their views on the, 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 the safety reason. That's what it is, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they have to be listened down in bed, so they do. Um, so I have even gone out and watched myself and Marshall and myself. I know what it's like, you know, and uh, um, but they just need to and and uh, they just need to be careful and and stand in the right places. And then the other two, they have to be respectful of other people's property and yeah. that there. So, you know, um. You know, uh, fences and stuff like that. They have to be very careful on what they're what they're uh, doing. You know, that sort of thing. Because we have to get back to that area again at some stage. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hopefully, even we can get back. You know, that sort of thing. That's it. You know, like, it just takes a wee bit of manners. You know, you're dealing with members of the public. You know, you're, you're you know you're you want to stand in somebody's garden. You want to stand in somebody's field. It's only manners that you you know you respect what what's there. Mm -hmm. You respect what's there and take your rubbish home with you and. Mm -hmm. Um, look after look after their property, you know that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I'm and there'll, there'll be a program available in the, 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 the days leading up to the rally in a lot of the local shops and uh, uh, power stations as well. Imagine. That's right. Yeah, there should be yeah. there should be up and running there from Thursday, so there should be, um, and you'll be able to get them um, in any of the shops local and and far. Uh, Thing, um, they're even being Donegal. There's a couple of guys around me from Donegal there looking, and they will we're sending stuff down the road to boys in Donegal. So, um, so we are so. Aye, and you know. like that's the, the one thing with the appeal was really. It's like it's not just like Monaghan. It, this is nationwide. There's uh, crews coming from all over the country to come and compete in Monaghan next Sunday, and it, uh, like it's it, it's such a local sport, but such a nationwide sport at the same time, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, the amount of phone calls I had from different Donegal men and different Cavan men, you know, in the last in the last week there, you know, for help and you know that sort of thing. It's just brilliant, so it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but um, yeah, um, looking forward to it now, and hopefully it will all go well. So thanks to Thomas and Kerry there, and best luck to everybody involved in Monaghan now this weekend. It's going to be a cracker. So that is season three, episode nineteen. Please like, share, rate, subscribe. All those things make a huge difference. So that you could rate or even leave a comment. Those things help as well too. So that's it. Until the next time. Take care. Speak soon. And bye. <laughs>